I've always been intrigued by the options offered by 3D scanning. I just needed some willing volunteers, some random items to scan, and even have an attempt at scanning my own face. Welcome to Darkside Scenics and my review of the Creality Otter 3D Scanner. First of all, thank you to Creality for sending me this product. I've never used a 3D scanner before, so I'm looking at this from a beginner's perspective. Now, I have been 3D scanned before by a company called ModelU who are based in Bristol. They have a state-of-the-art scanning booth and obviously a huge amount of expertise, but I thought having my own scanner at home would be really useful for some slightly unusual items which perhaps wouldn't be commercially viable for them to produce. So, very briefly, inside the box there's a case holding all the accessories and the scanner itself. On the back of the scanner there's a USB port, a plus and minus for exposure and a start and stop button. On the front it has multiple lenses to ensure it has the versatility to scan large and small items. Also included are an instruction manual, a scanning mat, a connection cable, an owl to test scan, some straps, some adapters, a cleaning cloth, a calibration mat and some marker points. The marker points are used when you have a flat surface with very few features. After attaching the wrist strap, as I really don't want to drop this, I connected the USB cable. The pack doesn't include a tripod, but I already had one, and there is a standard port in the base of the device. The software is compatible with Windows and Mac operating systems, and it looks like there's going to be a phone option soon. If you decide to buy one of these, it's really important to check the spec of your current computer. The iMac I generally use only has the minimum spec, so for this demonstration I used a Windows computer with an i7 processor and 16GB of RAM. You can find more information on this Creality website. When the Otter is connected to your computer, it's worth upgrading the firmware before you start. I won't go into too much detail here because the instructions are very clear. The final step is to calibrate the device using the mats provided. Again, the on-screen instructions are very clear, so it's nice and easy to follow. For my first scan, I decided to use the owl figure which was included in the pack. You just need to give the project a name and then tick the relevant boxes. I'm starting off quite slowly and trying to make sure everything on the screen stays green. It's important to keep the otter at the correct distance, and you can see the red arrows pointing to the optimal section I need to be in. When the scan has finished, I can select the one-click process which deals with the optimization and the meshing. I think for my first scan, I'm really happy with this. There are a few things to tidy up, but uh, the detail looks really good. I can also switch to color mode, which gives you a slightly more realistic view of the object. By selecting the lasso function on the software, you can remove the extra bits you don't need. The next step was to try a scan of my face. I changed the settings for a face and then I started the scan. And this is much easier if you have someone else helping you. You can see that because I was doing this myself, I lost tracking quite a few times, but the result actually was really detailed. 
The final result shows every line in your face, which I thought was really impressive. If I had a 3D printer, I could probably sell these at Halloween. So next, we'll step it up and be slightly more ambitious and do a full body scan. I need to make a few changes to the settings and also want to thank Ben here for being a volunteer. I was slightly concerned about the light here because the sun was quite bright, but we still got a good result. One of the main issues we had was scanning Ben's hair. I think because his hair is quite light and also the lighting above him wasn't great, it didn't really pick it up very well. So we put him down on his knees and managed to get a better scan of his hair. Once we'd completed the scanning and gone through the automatic process, we had a really good result of Ben in 3D. My next victim or volunteer was Lisa and uh, this full body scan came out really well. However I wanted to try the merge function which takes two scans and picks the best parts of both. I'm switching over to the face scan option with Lisa using the same thoughtful pose. Once the scan is complete, I can select the point cloud option from the right and then select the two scans, it's on automatic mode, and then click start. Once it's merged, meshed and colour mapped, we're left with a model which has far more detail. For my final scan, I chose an Adidas shoe. Obviously I wouldn't try to reproduce this with a 3D printer as you do need to be really careful about copyright. I'm starting off with the top and the sides of the shoe and you can see the software working in the background. I think that's looking really good, I just need to remove some of the additional parts. From the multi-project board I can select a new scan to get the sole of the shoe. As before I can use the merge function, it's on automatic so just select scan 1 and 2 and click start. When it's been through the process, I'm left with a completely 3D model, and that's the first time I've got every single angle of an object. So in summary, this is a great machine. I had some good results as a complete beginner. I had some frustrations with inconsistent lighting, shadows, and maybe the wrong settings, but I'll get better the more I use it. I'm looking forward to when they have the mobile phone option uh, to make it slightly more portable. And there's also a recent software upgrade to improve things there. Um, if you'd like more information, I'll leave some links in the description. If you'd like to ask any questions, please do leave a comment below. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.